Welcome. This is a video on botany knowledge. And we're going to have a look at Claude Morel after we're done with this. Okay, so shout out to Night Kate who started a guide on Steam. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, we start off with Timothy Grass. It's basically a uh, fodder. So, you know, my guinea pig eats it. He loves this thing. It's it's very aromatic. It's basically dried and combined with uh, alfalfa. And it's really nutritious forage for, for sheep and other, and other grazing animals. Uh, I mentioned guinea pigs, right? So also rabbits and what have you. So pretty much all domesticated pets really rely on this. Yeah. On we go. Uh, ferns. Ferns, I mean, um, you can find them pretty much anywhere in, in forests. Uh, they grow in really shady areas. So it's, it's great as a house plant if you have a very dark apartment. Uh, I think this could survive. It doesn't need as much sun, uh, sunlight as other house plants. So that's that. Uh, it has, you know, a lot of benefits in, in a sense. Like as a house plant, it's uh, going to purify your your air. So uh, we all know that they greatly improve. Um, indoor air quality um what else uh they're really easy to look after so, so they're really really low maintenance uh again if you've got hay fever they're not really that bad on on your allergies it doesn't flower so it's, it's just like a just a little cute plant so you'll see it all over the maps that's pretty much it, baby ferns. Then we've got these thujas. Thujas are, um, they're really cool trees. <laughs> they're really cool trees. Um, thujas actually can be used as a natural hedge. Uh, and they grow really really tall like uh i don't know i've seen thujas like nine feet tall I'm, I'm i'm not even kidding um so they are incredibly toxic though to um dogs uh but you know they are evergreen trees um they're also pretty much low maintenance uh, turns out that they grow from 10 to 200 feet. So there you go. And Thuja, actually, uh, not only is it a coniferous tree uh, slash shrub, but uh, it comes from what in Latin is called Arbor Vitae, which is the tree of life. No clue why it's called that, but, um, you know, history probably has a reason for that. Um, then we've got a lot of trees, like all the maps are full of different trees, you know, except for, uh, like the desert maps, the something, something, sorry, something, something, that dog saloon, was it that? Yeah, that docks a little so. Except for those maps, right? Which uh, they've got, you know, they've got other things there. They've got cacti. Um, in Redwood and, you know, other maps you're going to find, um, you know, pines and birches and oaks and weeping willows. So you're going to get a mix of... Um, 
coniferous trees, and you're also going to get, um, oh yeah, there's spruce and bamboo as well. Yeah. Bamboos are really easy to grow, um, and they're actually a very environmentally friendly option to, you know, most of the things that we're using right now just because they, they grow so fast. Uh, so birches are easy to spot because they have this very thin uh, white bark. It usually peels. Um, and and they usually do quite well in, in temperate cli climates. Oaks are huge trees. Uh, like, they're essential, basically, because they provide such amazing shade. And they have this rounded leaf, you know, and acorns. So. Weeping willows are usually considered to be like funeral trees or they're associated with mourning and there are a lot of stories connected to willow trees uh, from, you know, the antiquity. So um, it's, it's a fun thing to look into. All right. So speaking of the um, deserts, uh, cacti. Yeah. Lots of them. Uh, I didn't personally see any flowering ones. If they do get to flower, they also have that really lovely fruit. Um, the prickly pear, I, I generally have to, you know, um, handle it very carefully with gloves. And even so, uh, I'm going to get pricked. So, hmm. But they're so delicious. Um, and they have uh, these really fun looking uh, seeds. Let's see what nutrients they provide. Speaking of, they don't provide you with a lot of protein. There's just a gram of protein. Good amount of calories, 61. But they're a good source of fiber. 23% of your daily recommended intake of vitamin C. Wow, 30% magnesium. So prickly pears are pretty OP. All right. House plants, a bunch of them. I left out I left out the green herb which was added now with um, all of the Resident Evil DLCs. So you've got petunias and snake tongues and philodendrons and you've got succulents too. Ferns, also potted ferns. It really gives a nice touch to both the offices and the, I think you can find them in the asylum, the Larry's Memorial Institute. I'm not sure. What other plants have you seen uh, or trees or flowers? So what do you make of the flora in Dead by Daylight? Alrighty, so Claudette, um, you know, Claudette actually, like her name, Moral, I don't know if, the, if I, I bet that this was done intentionally. So Morals are a type of sac fungi. They're very expensive actually. They're wild mushrooms. They have like this earthy, nutty flavor. So I just find it fun that her surname is Moral. From the day that her parents gave Claudette her first science kit, she loved experiments. Her single-minded pursuit led to an early scholarship at a great college. It was a huge decision to leave Montreal, but the chance was too good to pass up. Her introverted nature meant that chat rooms and forums were now her best source of social interaction. Her new favorite activity was to answer botany questions for others under the moniker of Saint of Science Girl. One evening, during a long bus ride back from the city, Claudette took a stroll that would change her life. It only took a minute for her to get completely disoriented in the thick woods. 
She never found her way back. Her forum only started to wonder where she was a week after she stopped posting. He's so studious. Let's go through the memories a little bit. So, Barrett is seven years old and feels alone, very alone. Yes, her parents love her. Yes, they want the world for her, but the world doesn't want her. Or at least that's what Claudette believes. She just wants to fit in. Fit in at school, fit in with her cousins, fit in with her teammates on the soccer pitch. But fitting in isn't as simple as being like others. She's different and she knows it. So Claudette enjoys observing beetles, loves to collect things. She has a big uh, imagination. Oh, plants too. Probably she presses flowers. So I highly recommend that you guys go through these uh, because they're really great memories and I don't really want to spoil all of them. That doesn't sound good. I'm just playing Dwight. really startled me and I'm the obsession oh just doing my research inspecting leaves <laughs> 